and obviously party and more. They got a million to rise. So therefore, these people who are managing, they don't know about rice and they want to plant rice. They know nothing, they only know about kin. So they encourage the government and the heads of Gaisuku to plant rice and they go manage it. But none of them don't know about rice. What? No, land Chetra, no, he know about rice. What the agriculture manager know? Charles Brown, he know about rice. They have command over rice. So they don't know nothing about rice. They bring a man from uh, East Coast or where Micah pay him $500,000 a month. He get him $500,000 a month for raise the Epcomar for smoke a cigarette. Free house. Free house. Free yard. Right? And then two gentlemen are raised to smoke cigarette. Right. All right, comrade. Let me introduce you to another speaker who is no other than Darum Kumar Siraj. He is a guest of Gawu and he is a general secretary of the Rice Ujuja Association. Who will give you a few moments? Come ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, President of Gawu, General Secretary, Assistant General Secretary, friends all. First of all, if you're going to plant rice on sugar land, then you should invite a rice man to talk at the sugar meeting. And that is why I've been invited here this evening on a GAU platform to give solidarity on behalf of the Guyana Rice Producers Association, on behalf of our farmers, to you, the workers of Gaisuko, the workers of our sugar industry. We have had decades, indeed centuries of cooperation between farmers and workers in the agriculture sector. And today, when our sugar workers are being hammered into the ground by an uncaring administration supported by an uncaring Ministry of Agriculture that gets its directives from an uncaring government, then all of us, it is our duty to stand together and resist at all costs the efforts by this government to destroy our agriculture sector, to destroy our workers, and to destroy our farmers. All because of politics. And I said it is because of politics for several reasons. Number one is that this government, the PNC, APNU, AFC coalition government, is of the view, and was always of the view, that workers in the agriculture sector and farmers are supporters of the PPP. This is a free country. Our constitution provides for freedom of association. And me and you and all others are free to associate with whoever they want to associate without being discriminated against. And they should do a study of who are supporters and who are not supporters before they jump to conclusion. Because when you attack sugar and when you start to bring down agriculture, it is not supporters of the PPP alone who will suffer. It is the entire country that will fall. Villages and villages and regions upon regions. Our entire economy will collapse if we don't take agriculture seriously. But my friends, this government don't care about that. 
Can you imagine a minister of finance only two days ago, only two days ago, after budget consultation and stakeholders raised this issue of unemployment, underemployment, and young people not getting jobs. The minister, Winston Jordan, was barefaced enough to tell those stakeholders that job creation is not a matter for the government. And I said barefacedly because the APNU, the PNC, the AFC, in 2015, they promised young people thousands and thousands of jobs. And we must not forget that. And you remember the slogans? It is time to respect all young people. It is time to give them jobs. It is time to recognize the sugar workers. It is time to give them 20%. It is time to respect all old people, our pensioners. My friends, those were the glorious slogans hanging across roadways, shouted from microphones at street corners, in the cities, in the villages, promising every single Guyanese a good life. Double pension for all people, 20% for workers, $9,000 back for rice farmers, jobs for the young people, free education, and sad to say, some of us, we thought they were sincere in those promises. We thought they would give you 20%. The farmers, they thought they were getting $9,000 back for party. The young people who never experienced the government of the PNC were fooled into believing they were getting jobs. And sad to say, the elderly, the pensioners, they thought they would get double pension, as was promised. And who made those promises? Ramjatan, Nagamutu, and the rest of them are on record. It is a part of their manifesto that they went to the people in 2015. They came here across the length and breadth of this country, and they made those promises. And today, Wales' potential sisters and the adjoining villages is going down. Those villages are going down. Our people are suffering. Not only did you not get the 20%, you not even get 20 cents. And they took away from you when they promised you so much. They barefacedly, in the first year of government, stop the API, your production incentive, annual production incentive. How much of us, how much sugar workers, every year depended on the API to buy you a new stove, to buy you a new fridge, to pay the mortgage, to buy school uniform, to run wire in your house. The API does be like on Christmas bonus. And after years of workers getting it, this government that promised so much took away even the API from the workers. Rice farmers barely know the second crop in 2015 Instead of $9,000 bag, some of them get $900 bag. When they go to the miller, one of them, he tell his body, say, you not vote for PNC? Go and tell the miller he left out or not. He give you 900 and he left out or not. He body cuts them up. But that is what is happening, my friends. That is what is happening. And the politics is deep in it because they want to destroy the opposition PVP 
and in destroying sugar workers and farmers, they think they will destroy the PVP. But my friends, they are destroying the country by these actions. All over the world, agriculture gets support, except in Guyana. We have a president who said some of our traditional sectors are courses, courses in our country. He named six of them. Bauxite is a course. Timber is a course. Fisheries, another one. Sugar, rice, and gold. Comrades, friends, ladies and gentlemen, how can these industries that form the backbone of our economy can in any way, by any sane person, refer to as courses? It is unbelievable that that which makes Guyana what it is can be considered and described by a head of state as a course. Sugar Big Alamie, whether you're black, Indian, Portuguese, or white, sugar bring all of us here except the Amerindians. How can sugar, that which brought us here, whether we came as slaves, or indentured laborers, or as managers, sugar bring all of you. And how sugar can today be described as a curse on our people? It is ridiculous. It is unbelievable. It is insane for anyone to speak in such manner of our pillars of our economy. The president talked about value added in these sectors. But today, they are encouraging millers and exporters to sell paddy and not to sell rice. It's a backward step from what they are talking about. Instead of moving to refined sugar and packaged sugar, they must shut down the estate. And they are not creating any alternative employment for our people. That, my friends, is cruel. It's cruelty beyond explanation. They don't feel it. Look at this young lady here selling cassava chip and planting chip. Sales can down. The shop will close up just now. The man says he sell three bottle gas this whole month. People never have money for buy gas. They go cut down cold and wood. They go hunt calm, cook with chill. You go smoke up the village now because you can't buy gas, you can't buy caro, and you can't afford electricity. All over cash flow gone. From the biggest retail supermarket to the street corner, cassava chip and planting chip stall, people are feeling the squeeze. And those who feel it, knows it. And those who feel it must talk about it. And those who feel it must take action against it. Because, my friends, when them tell you they go get 20%, the first thing them do, them take 50% for themselves. And then double the amount of minister. And we got four vice president now. We got prime minister and roll around with a $22 million land cruiser. We got our next minister, your divorcee, and your married in Grenada. And a carry girlfriend of Texas on taxpayers' money. We heard about Holder. This man is like Rip Van Winkle. You know, we come up to now to address matters of an agriculture nature. I watch from the ASEA Gaisuko man. The own report on Gaisuko made no recommendation about closure. Can you imagine them own report that throw it away? Because the report said sugar is viable. And they don't want to hear about viability of sugar. 
They want to shut it down to punish people because they feel. Because unfortunately, they feel that those people did not support them. My friends, how wrong can you be? Rice farmers support them. Sugar workers support them. Because of what they were promised. Of what they were promised. Today, all of that gone. They only care about themselves. Today, I was at the business summit at the Marriott Hotel. And ministers were there. And I listened to Christopher Ram. And Christopher Ram said to me, and he said to the audience there, and said to the audience there, that when we talk about taxation, and we talk about revenue, we must also talk about expenditure. And there must be a tax policy. Because if you rake in tax, you must spend responsibly. There is no tax policy. Two days ago, three days ago, national newspapers, Minister Jordan said he never bring in no new tax since 2015. But how come you pay flat on electricity? How come you pay flat on water? How come you pay flat on education? How come you pay now a thousand percent increase on donkey cart license and house cart license? And this man said he not bringing no new tax. And Christopher Ram said that the expenditure of the government has gone, has expanded, is bloated. Government expenditure has increased by hundreds of percent. And that is what we are faced with in this country. Every minister got a secretariat. You can barely fit in a school across there. Creating employment for people with no skills, safe and except political affiliation. And that is why our country is going from bankruptcy to bankruptcy. Different levels. We sinking deeper and deeper every single day. They're lamenting now that they can't execute projects. How are you going to execute project when you knock off competent people and you hire people who can tighten a bolt, who can move on straw, who can write on paper, and who feeling it today? We, the housewives, the school children, the workers, the shop owners, the NDC chairman, he can't make money off of claim the cleaner dream. We are the people who are feeling it. They won't come wrong here anymore. The Prime Minister this year didn't even go to address the rally, the meeting at the end more for the end more matters they function. Because he frightened. He was afraid of what the sugar workers will tell him there and how they will greet him because of the betrayal of sugar and of the rights of workers. Oh God, you couldn't give them people 5%? Let's say think bad and you can't make the 20% you promise. Give them something now. But like a bully, I don't care whether I'm bully. They ain't give no increase, and like I said, they took away that which you have and had. And today, they're taking your jobs, my friends. This is not a done deal. We can stop it. But the only way we can stop it is with unity. And that is why I am here on the GAU platform to bring to you Messages of solidarity from our farming community, from our rice farmers, to let you know that we are prepared to stand with you, to oppose these closures, to find alternatives, to get your um, 
your benefits, your severances, for them to put some economic venture in place, for you to put rice and flour in your cupboard, to put bread on the table, to send your picnic to school, even if they remove the fat on education, you still got to send a healthy child to school. <clears throat> so my friends, once again, I want to thank you very much for welcoming me to this platform of the GAU. And I want to close by reminding you that the Rice Producers Association is prepared to stand with you shoulder to shoulder in the picket line, in the marches, in the demonstration to fight for that which is a right, a universal human right. The right to work, the right, right to live, the right to an education, the right to portable water. These are all rights. They are not luxuries. I want to thank you very much on that note and to wish you a good night.